Welcome to Inside the Tape with Greg Cosell. It's an Inside the Birds presentation. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan. And joining us every week to break down the tape of an Eagles game is Greg Cosell. And the Eagles are coming off a 28-23 to win over the Jacksonville Jaguars in Week 9. They've won four straight. And they're now 6-2 and two with the Dallas Cowboys on deck. Hey, Greg, sometimes a final score of a game makes it look a lot closer than it appeared, and it really jumps out that the Eagles outgained the Jaguars 447 yeah. to 215. They averaged over six yards per play, while Jacksonville averaged 4.1 yards per play. And yet, when you look at the final score, you see it was a one-possession game that was close there at the end. When you're watching tape of this game in particular, what are the takeaways that jumped out at you? Well, to be quite frank, I think they basically kicked their ass. I mean... You know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the fumble by Barkley, which really was not a fumble, um, uh, you know, that made it a, a closer game than, than it needed to be, obviously. And it became a one-score game. And it required the interception by N'Kobe Dean on a really bad throw by Trevor Lawrence to you know, seal the victory. But for the most part, they dominated the game pretty much on both sides. So, you know, it was the kind of game, and that's the NFL, where those things happen. And sometimes teams lose those games, and you just, you know, when they become really problematic in the course of a season. But for the most part, they dominated the game. Greg, let, let me let me ask you this question um, uh, about this team. And, you know, I know you, let, let's isolate the, the to the side the clubs that they've played over this four-game sure. week. Let's just go by their, their defensive tape. There have been some amazing stories of development. Yeah. One that in you use this line, I, I wanted to follow up because with our Patreon group, you said Zach Bond is borderline dominant. At times, Please. for sure. Okay. Break down the traits that nobody knew he had coming into the season, quite frankly. Yeah. And we discussed this with the Patreon group because, you know, just to be as quick as we can so we don't yep. spend too much time, he was an edge pass rusher in college. So, a lot of people felt coming out that he wouldn't be able to do that at the NFL level. So he needed to play a different position. So he was drafted by the saints who did not view him that way as many didn't. So the thought was, okay, he's going to become a, a true linebacker, not an edge rusher. Um, but they had really good linebackers and he never really got to play very much. He ended up playing in his last year or two with the saints only when they were in their base defense, which was not very often. So he didn't play many snaps. Okay, and he essentially played on the ball as a true Sam linebacker, meaning he played to the strong side of the offense on the ball on the line of scrimmage. Okay, so he didn't play off the ball. So now when you sign him, you know, I'm sure there's people in the Eagles building, you know, who liked him coming out. You know, maybe he's a great guy. I don't know, Zach Bond. But, you know, you're signing him with the idea that, hey, we're going to make a position change, but quite frankly, we don't know how that's going to work. We just don't. If a guy hasn't done that at the NFL level, you don't know. Now, I'm sure they've done their due diligence. I'm sure they had people in the building who were there when he came out and maybe liked him and, you know, said, hey, he's smart, he's savvy, he's whatever, you know, all those good things. There's always a scout. Adam, we've talked about this over the years. There's always scouts who then look back at, you know, their report of a guy coming out and if they really liked him, they give him an opportunity. You yeah. know, that's the way it works. Uh, so they made him a stack backer. We had no idea. Well, he's been really good from week one against Green Bay. I mean, when I say he's dominant times, I, you know, I don't mean that, you know, we're putting him in the category of Fred Warner. I don't I don't yeah. want people to think that. Yes. Yes. But he's asked to do a lot of things. Linebackers are really, really important in a Vic Fangio defense because not only do they have to play the run, but because of the way they in which the way in which cover four quarters is taught, they really don't want their safeties to have to play up and to react to routes that are kind of intermediate level routes you know, short intermediate level routes, they expect their linebackers, their underneath defenders to do that as on the first play of the game last week. That was a clear example of what they asked their linebackers to do when it was a flood concept and he had to sink and get underneath the out slash corner route by Evan Ingram. 
he did an unbelievably good job, but he's also been really good against the run. He seems to have a great feel for navigating traffic and, you know, hitting gaps. You know, he's, he's, I just think he's played really well. Now I'm not the linebacker coach. I'm not charting every play. I don't know, obviously what, what guys are asked to do on every single play, you know, but I've seen enough football to have a general idea. And I think he's played really good football at him. Just one thing I want to follow up. Jeff and I had, had put this out that, you know, they 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 looked at Van Kinkle, but he was coming off a major injury. He had a foot yep. injury. He was coming off of, so and they weren't going to pay him ten million a year. So that that was a non-starter. Right. But you look at this guy, right, who had not played off the ball linebacker ever. So you you're breaking down the tape each week, and you see him getting better and better and better. We let's again, we're not talking Fred Warner here. But are you seeing some Van Ginkle? Like, because you had mentioned before, they did a little rushing. What, what kind of what kind of traits does he have? Is he well? Van Ginkle is a longer athlete. Okay, yeah. Van Ginkle is a better true pass rusher than Bond would be at the NFL level. And Van Ginkle plays a lot on the edge. Bond does not play on the. I mean, every once in a while in the Eagles scheme, he is in. You know, what does that happen? Two or three snaps a game, but he's not an edge player in the Eagles defense. Yeah. Van Ginkle plays a lot on the edge. He's a longer. Uh, probably bendier athlete than Bond. You know, Bond's not bendy, which is why a lot of people didn't think he would be, uh, you know, an edge pass rusher in the NFL. Um, so Van Ginkle's a different player than, than you know, he also can play stack, but they're different players. Mm. Um, so, and like you said, they weren't going to pay Van Ginkle that kind of money. So Bond probably came on the cheap, right? I mean, they didn't have to pay. Yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. It's One year deal. Yeah. yeah. Three and I mean, a half million guaranteed, I think, Adam, or is it not even that much? Yeah, I think I think it was three and a half million exactly. Did did uh so I they, personally look to sign him, you know, sooner than later. Well, I, I was mean, just about to say this sounds like it could be if they don't extend him in this season, this sounds like a very good topic for inside the um the intel with Greg Cosell around free agency, free agency. right? Where we're starting <laughs> to figure out not only his value, Greg and Adam, but also with more teams doing more exotic things up front and playing Fangio fronts and having guys who can be versatile, his value might, re if Van Ginkle made $10 million, who's to say Zach yeah, Vaughn can't play like this and you know, do the same? Look, we I know remember. the Eagles aren't paying him $10 million. Yeah. We'll just tell you look, that right you, now. You, you guys know this. I mean, and, 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 you know, I've talked about this before the year Steve Spagnolo was off, you know, not coaching in the league. I know Spags very well and his wife's from Philadelphia. So yeah. he, he called me up and he said, can I come in every Monday? And, you know, just, I, I want to stay up in the league and watch tape. So I said, of course you can. What am I going to say? No, you can't. <laughs> so, so he came in pretty much every Monday. So of course we got into great conversations and he taught me so much. Um, but we, we, we'd always get into these conversations about what you can and can't do as a defensive coordinator if you are lacking at a certain position. So it's easy for a fan or a media person to say, oh, linebackers aren't important, safeties aren't important. That's easy to say. Mm -hmm. But then what defensive coordinators say is, well, there's things I can't do in my playbook if I'm not good at that position. And it, it so happens, and I know this for a fact from talking to people who are Fangio people, that linebackers are really important in the Fangio scheme because of what he asked them to do. So you can't just say, well, you know what, they can just get another guy. You know, 100%. Zach Bond has been really good in this scheme. Yep. And, you know, I'm not saying, like I said, we're not we're not getting into the Fred Warner, you know, conversation. That's pointless. Right. Fred Warner is the best linebacker in football. And if – probably on his way to being a first ballot hall of famer, but mm -hmm. Zach Bond is really, really good in the context of this defense. Let's also talk about Nicobe Dean, Greg. Yep. I obviously made um, the interception at the yeah. end of the game. Uh, I think there are some times you probably still see some struggles as far as, you know, coverage or, or zone depth, but in general, since week one, how would you say he has played? And then how has he complimented Bond and vice versa? Um, I would say that the Jaguars probably saw some issues in, in coverage because that's why they called that play. Mm -hmm. Because that play was designed for Dearness Johnson, who's a really good receiver, by the way. That's why he's, you know, he's a good blocker and a good receiver. That's why he's on the Jaguars roster. Um, and uh, you know, they they felt like, hey, we have a matchup we like. You know, don't forget that was a truly high, you know critical situation, high leverage critical situation in the game. And that's what they chose to do. Right. Um, so 
you know, he made a great play. He he played really well in coverage on that play. Uh, you know, I think Dean is has played solid football. Um, he's really good. Uh, he's he's a gap shooter in the run game. He can do that really well. He's a solid blitzer. Not exactly the same as he was in college, just because he's smaller. Um, but I think he's he's improving in pass coverage. Not to the point where you'd say that boy that's a strength of his game, but he's improving. You know, and obviously that was a great, great play. That was man coverage. You know, it was a terrible throw. I mean, if it was a good throw, probably would have been a touchdown. But Mm. still, hey, that's the way it played out, and he made a great play. Right. We're going to diagnose that play, and we're also going to take a look at the Zach Bond uh, play that you were just referencing a couple of first play of the game. Yep, first play of the game for for the Eagles defense. We'll we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, Getting back to Vic Fangio's defense. Greg, you know, last week against the Bengals, who were shorthanded, they didn't have T. Higgins. We saw Vic, I guess, I don't want to say he'd be more aggressive, but he certainly played more man defense under the, as you mentioned, under the two-shell umbrella known as two-man, where you still have two safeties deep. What what did you observe about his style of defense against the Jaguars? This week they played more cover one um, than than normal. I mean, you know, obviously we've seen um, the Eagles, you know, um, you know, play a lot. The Fangio, the, the basic premise, of course, is quarters, you know, but you can do anything from that. That's the thing. But against the Jaguars, they played a much higher percentage of single high with cover one and cover three, much more of the foundations. Now, you know, good coaches, they play to the opponent. That's what they do. And obviously, we know the Jaguars were lacking receivers, uh, you know, outside wide receivers. So they probably felt that they could do that. And that would not be an issue at all. Um you know, they they essentially uh, rushed four. You know, surprisingly, I would have thought maybe they would have blitzed more if they wanted to play man. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they didn't. They they only rushed five on six of Lawrence, 35 dropbacks. That's a really low percentage. But they played a, a lot more single high. All right, Greg, off of that, before we look at the clips, so as Isaiah Rogers first starts starting for Darius Slay, let's, let's yep. kind of get, get your bird's eye view of what he looked like and. A guy that you've been very high on over his career, going back to New Orleans, is C.J. Garner-Johnson. What's going on with him? Yeah, I mean, I think that for the most part, he's, you know, he's been okay. I mean, um, you know, he gets beat once in a while when he has to play man coverage. You know, it just maps out that way, particularly with particular formations. If it's a three-by-one set and you're playing nickel, you know, unless you want to you know, if, or, or or if it's a one by three set, let's say, and there's three wide receivers to one side and a tight end is the single receiver. And unless you want to flip your corner, which the Eagles rarely ever do, by the way, you know, Rogers or slash Slay Rogers plays left corner and Mitchell plays right corner. Then what happens is your safety has to play number three to trips man to man. If you're going to play man, which is what happened on that Trammell 22 yarder, um, late in the game just the, i believe was the play right before the dean interception um and uh because blank and chip is not a man-to-man defender you're not going to match him up on wide receivers and by the way i think blank and chip playing downhill in the run game is really really good i mean i think he's played really well in that regard he's a physical competitive tenacious player you know in his own way he's kind of a trendsetter for a defense you know he's that kind of player um you know, he plays with a little bit of a swagger. You know, is he ever going to be the best athlete on the field? No, but I think he's just a really solid football player. So anyway, Gardner Johnson ends up having to play man at times, and he struggles a bit at times. You know, I mean, that's, you know, it's not like he's a bad player, but, you know, every look, he's a safety who's now asked to match up at times to wide receivers. Sometimes that they struggle. Yeah. And sometimes that's Mike Evans uh, because of right. a I mean, motion that, that the Tampa Bay runs to make you know, that. And, and right. you know, offenses are good too. I remember a few weeks ago when people asked me, you know, well, how did Nolan Smith get matched up on Jamar Chase on the t- touchdown? You know, yeah. you guys remember that play? Yeah, you know, yep. sometimes that happens. You know, offenses. You know, this is the chess match with coaching. You know, you don't win every down tactically. You know, it just doesn't work that way in the NFL. One question on Isaiah Rogers. Uh, you know, you you you. You can go back to the Colts too. Yeah, and and I liked him that last year he started with the coach. Yeah, from a size standpoint, are you yeah. a little bit worried that he's a little smaller than you yes. ideally like? In an ideal world, yes, yes. Okay. But I think he's a solid corner. You know, see here, you just hit it on something that any given week he could get beat at him. That doesn't mean he's a bad player. Right. You know, right. there's going to be some matchups, some plays where he gets beat. But obviously, when he made you know knocked that ball down that Gardner Johnson intercepted when it was again he was. He was stride for stride with Chase. 
Greg, um, real quick on the front four, we haven't really got into that yeah. um, before we get into the clips. Uh, anything jump out at you? I mean, you said they rel- Vic Fangio relied mostly on a front four, four maybe, rush. Yeah. Josh Sweat, we know, had two sacks, but what really stood out to you about the D line? If well, anything? Sweat stood out early in the game. He ate up Walker a little a number of times. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, early in the game, it was really noticeable. Um, and then Milton Williams, and I've talked about him almost every week, he stands out to me every single week. You know, he may not have numbers, but we know that D-tackle numbers don't really matter. You know, that's that's not really relevant. But he's he creates pressure. He's, you know, he's not dominant. I'm not going to use that word. But he's, he's a factor every week when I watch tape. I notice mm-hmm. Milton Williams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. and Jalen Carter, you know, we talked about him with the Patreon, and we talked about him in the pregame yep. show, where he does show up, and you see five or six pretty good reps, but I think everybody's still still waiting for a, another takeover style game. I would say at this point, he's a splash player. He's got a number of reps every game that are, oh my god, wow, he's just, uh, the traits are dominant. And, but you talked about this, Jeff, quite a bit, and you're right, that you just would like to see you know, that happen a little more often. He's certainly capable of that. It's not like he can't do it. You talked about the Zach Bond play that came uh, very yeah. early in the game. It was Jacksonville's first game. I'm sorry, first, first play. offensive snap. So, yeah, for the Eagles. So let's take a look at that. They called a play that attack zone, whether it's cover three or quarters. And this happened to be quarters, um, I believe so. So – what they called was was a zone beater play, which is flood. So, mm-hmm. so what it's it, or three level. So what that means is there's a vertical route, there is an intermediate route, which is almost always an out route or a sort of angled corner, but it's more of an out route. And then there's a, a short route. So right. it's three level. It's called flood. So obviously this has to start with the tight end on the left side for the Jags, motioning over yeah, to he's the right. Motion here. across. That's Farrell. Mm-hmm. So what, what you're going to see now is we run it right here. So if you freeze it right, uh, go a little further, Jeff. So right here, okay? So what do you have? You can see that the number one receiver, who I believe is Parker Washington, he's because it became cover three. You can see it's cover three. There's mm-hmm. three deep defenders. There's a post safety, um, who's Gardner Johnson, and there's Rodgers up top, and there's Mitchell you know, down below. So they, each is responsible for a deep third. Okay, Mm -hmm. so now Parker Washington's going to run vertically. Now, what I was saying is what a lot of teams do, particularly if that vertical route is a little more angled inside, which this Mm -hmm. one is, a lot of teams will say, hey, let the safety pick him up and let the corner drop off. The Eagles don't coach it that way. They always want the corner to run vertically with number one. So because they don't want to give up any kind of deep coverage, okay? And the reason you can't really have the corner drop off is let's say he then runs a deep sail route. You mm-hmm. know, the corner has to be able, able to play that. So now they want their underneath coverage to be able to play the the intermediate out route because Blankenship is is this is the flat defender here. So he mm-hmm. jumps the flat route, the short route. So now the, uh, Ingram's going to run the the intermediate route, and and you see Bond. Look how much depth he gets. Look how he sinks and sinks and sinks with great awareness of the route, mm-hmm. and and gets underneath this and is able to knock it away. I don't know what the Jags expected, but my guess is they expected this to be a completion. They <laughs> called this, you know, figuring, hey, we're getting zone. This is a great zone beater yep. uh, because normally that's a void. But because of Bond, it's not a void. This is really high level linebacker play. Great within, job. Wow. Within the scheme of of how they coach it. And by the way, it's very tough. I mean, one thing to get his depth of that drop correct and be in the right spot. But you know, for a guy who's mostly an edge of his life, I mean, he, he makes a pretty good attempt good at trying to get this ball. Drop. No, yeah. that's a that's great play. This is when I saw this play the first play, because I, I've spoken to coaches who were in the Fangio school, I knew exactly what happened on this play and I loved it. Yeah, great stuff here. Now, is there anything Jacksonville, maybe they were expecting, I mean, I think the tape would have shown that Bond was going to run because like you said, the the corner is always going to run with the vertical route. But I'm wondering, did, is this not a great route by Ingram? Well, go back, go back, route? go back. Okay. Um, I think they were hoping that the run action would engender a stronger uh, reaction by the second level defenders because all they needed was Bond to be a step late, and this is a completion. Mm-hmm. So Bond does a great job like also yeah. in not stepping up 
this is where your old line has to help you. Your old right. line has to show more of a run block look to, uh -huh. to help because all you need is Bond never really stepped here. Play it now. No, yeah, he never. He takes I mean, he one takes step, a mini step up, but yeah. he, he doesn't really step up. So, right. Jeff, that's what they were hoping. Gotcha. So that would have created more space for England you don't, to get behind. It's the NFL, you didn't need yeah. a lot of. You don't need a lot of space. One step, and this is a completion. Right. So good stuff there. Excellent stuff. And again, the awareness really is what sticks out for a guy who has not played. Yeah, um, I mean, that that's, spot. That that's not an easy play. I don't want people to think that's routine. That's not routine. Hell no, not for it. Especially for a guy. Think about it. The guy was. He never played more than like 25% of defensive snaps for the Saints, and he never played inside backer. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Amazing. All right, let's take a look at N'Kobe Dean's play here in the end zone, the game ceiling interception, as it is uh, known yep. here. So, so now, again, mm -hmm. it, if we walk through this, it's a three-by-one set, okay? They have the back offset to the boundary, okay? Because what they're going to do is they want to get that matchup. You can almost see that the, the way the matchup's going to play out because they're going to take the wide receiver down below, who I believe is Parker Washington, and they're mm -hmm. going to get him out of there, you know? Right. So, so now you're going to end up with the matchup that the Jaguars wanted, which was the offset back uh, Dearness Johnson offset to the boundary versus the linebacker N'Kobe Dean. This is the matchup they wanted, okay? That's mm -hmm. why they put him in short burst motion, which you can see before the snap of the ball. That is the matchup that they game plan for this play. So, you know, if you run it, you can see that Washington's going to go inside and take mm -hmm. Mitchell with him. And if you freeze it right here, what do you got, Jeff, Adam? You got one-on-one. One-on-one, yep. yeah. And that's exactly where that's Lawrence what they want. is looking. That's, that's what they want. That's that This was the play design and the play call. And if he, and if he actually threw this ball – as a back shoulder throw, which he should have, mm -hmm. right? Probably would have been a touchdown, but he didn't. He threw it over the top, which was the wrong throw given the depth that Dean had, you know, right from the beginning of the play. So right. he, he just made the wrong throw. And again, by the way, great interception. I mean, this great is not interception. A catch. great play. Because if you knock play. this down, if you only yeah. knock it down, they still have a chance to throw it in next time. So this is right. A, it's a, an it's important a great play. play. It's a great Same thing with guys play. in in training camp. Nicobe really struggled in coverage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this that. is one area where we were concerned coming into the season. You well, know? And by the way, that was not his strong point in college either. Right. There you go. Right. I wonder what the, they expected. This is not a great sort of move by Dearness, to be honest with you. I get it. He's a running back. Well, he didn't really have a, a, chance, a move opportunity because Dean was playing with so much depth. Uh -huh. my, what they might have been hoping, go back. They might have been hoping that the way Dean would play this, and he played it really well, was that he'd get picked by Washington. That's like, what I was wondering, the way Washington kind of slows up here. I and... think that's what they were hoping, which, yep. which you know, in some ways, again, I don't question coaches because, you know, I know I know how hard they work, and I, I just don't do that. But in some ways, when you saw that short burst motion by, by Dearness Johnson, you know, Dean sort of expanded with that and kind of got himself in a position where he could not be picked. But right. I, my guess is they were hoping that, again, we're talking about one step. Think back to the Barkley touchdown week one against the Packers where mm -hmm. McDuffie missed it. And and, and he, he actually did get picked a little bit. And McDuffie missed it by what? You know, two feet? Uh, Fractions I mean, of an inch, it seems. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't take much. By the way, I, I like, I sort of like the route concept because it looks like they're running the same exact concept at the, the right here. I don't want to say the top of the screen, but with DeGene, because the inside receiver is going to hook him. And then Ingram sort of runs and out. He does, he, he stays. He doesn't run it no, back to the end zone. But yeah. I was wondering if maybe that was the second read to try to pop it to Ingram real quick to get inside the Well, tent. this play was designed for Johnson. He, he you know, he wasn't mm -hmm. going to trips, you know, unless okay. he had to run out of the pocket. Gotcha. Okay. Good stuff there. And again, yeah. a really athletic play by Nicobe Dean as these Great linebackers play. really start to come into their own. And the last thing we're going to look at defensively is, and it seems like every week, Cooper DeGene, uh, Greg, makes a really interesting play. And of course, he had a huge one on fourth down that we're going to take a look at really quickly. And I liked it, especially after reading – the communication that was involved. Uh, apparently there was a lot of alerts going on that helped Cooper kind of I get an understanding of what the Jags wanted to do. This was the fourth down and one play after a failed 
sneak, if you remember. Yeah. Um, there was a third and yeah. one sneak. It didn't work. And here's uh, – you guys see it, everything, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there's Dean, and this is Cooper DeGene here. So, Greg, I'll let you set it up from there. Yeah, I don't um, – I just, you just need to run it a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. Because this was the one on, on – yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is man coverage. It's fourth and – right. It's fourth and – so if you go back now, now I remember. The, the, Look at an avoid Washington. This is great. right. So again, they're they're looking for a little bit of a pick play here. Yep. I mean, that's what they're hoping for. Because yep. again, right they need here. one yard. Yeah. This play's not yep. called to gain twenty yep. yards. This right. play's called to get a first down. And a lot of teams run this kind of play where there's a pick, and all you do is you throw it out to the guy. I mean. The Chiefs there. run a variation of this, not the same thing. The Chiefs run a variation of this, uh, you know, when it's two yep. yards or less, and they gain four yards and they get a first down and they move the sticks. A lot of teams do this. But DeGene does a great, you know, I think Washington, first of all, does a terrible job because yeah. you're allowed to make contact within one yard of the line of scrimmage. Yep. He should have basically blocked DeGene and it would not have been a penalty. Yeah, so, throw a chicken wing into him or something. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's, that's barely so, I mean, that. <laughs> so, you know. But DeGene, he's playing man on the on the receiver. So, I mean, right. that's his guy, you know. So, we're not going to denigrate the play, but mm -hmm. this is really Washington doing a crap because he's allowed to hit him. He may not know the rule. He's a, you know, he's a second-year wide receiver, you mm -hmm. know, and you know how those Penn State guys are. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> he, he may not know the rule. Right. I'm wondering, <laughs> Greg, even in man defense, do you often see – if, especially if they expect it coming, would you often see the two outside guys maybe communicate so that the outside guy would take um, the receiver and Cooper would have taken Parker just so that you're avoiding the pick altogether? I mean, could that happen? Yeah. You know, so they chose not to switch do off that. right here. Yeah. yeah. They chose not to do that. Could it happen? Sure. Okay. I thought it was pretty – I mean, you got two young yeah. kids there. They don't have to yeah. switch, and the guy gets through traffic and makes a, makes a stop. I mean, obviously, whatever call they made, they were not switching because no one showed any hesitation in what they were right. doing. Right. All right. So uh, that that's becoming our weekly Cooper DeGene, uh, you know, he's physicality really, and strength. I mean, and he's he doing started great. what? Was it week six that he be, first started playing, I believe? Uh, I think it was either six Oops. or – the Browns game, right? I believe, No, no. It was it – was, yeah, the Browns game, I think. That week six. Well, the point is, yeah, their defense has. I mean, he's five. a really good player too, and he's really become a nice piece in this defense. All right, why don't we transition to the offense, Greg? Guys, we once again saw the Eagles lean heavily on the run game. Yeah, and, and I talked in our podcast uh, that dropped uh, yesterday that the Eagles are starting to resemble their offense like a blend between the very run heavy 2021 team. Even Lane Johnson has mentioned that, but they're also hitting the big plays. Like the 2022 team. That well, that's what they are. The Super Bowl. I mean, right. Barkley has per game the most first down carries of any um, running back in the league. That's He's true. one behind Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry numbers wise, but they have played one more game. So mm. per game, he's got the most first down carries of any back in the league. And then um, we've seen that. Jalen Hurts does not necessarily drop back that many times relative to what the NFL is. So this is who they are. This is what they are. And this is the way they view that is the best way to play. Right. And as long as Barkley, who's running better than he ever has and looks phenomenal, you know, as long as he's running like that and they can create some big explosive plays off it, like the 13 personnel, 46 yarder to Smith, a great example of working off the run game with base personnel, you know, as long as they can do that and, and still convert some third downs, this is what their offense will look like. This is what – it's it's evident. We don't have to say it, guys. It's evident this is what the coaching staff sees their offense to be. We're not making this up. We're not making a value judgment. This mm -hmm. is what the tape shows. This is what the coaching staff sees. Greg, w one thing that I thought was interesting is that – and unfortunately, um, Vince Schumer got hurt. You know, with a concussion, but that is another sort of wrinkle that they've added to this offense. Yeah. Have you seen anything change? We you, we obviously know they've become more of a balanced team this year, which has really not been there been the case before because of Barkley and Jalen's running. But over the last four or five weeks, have you seen a, a change in the offense at all or, or anything stand out to you that, well, that's been really strong? 
I think they've settled into what we just said, Adam. I think the coaching staff, you know, whether it's Nick, whether it's Kellen Moore, it's probably a collaboration, you know, with everybody. I think they've settled into the fact that, hey, we've got a, a back who's both a sustaining back and a big playback. We've got a quarterback that can do some really good things, but is probably not the guy you want dropping back 40 times just by choice. Um, so this is the best way to play. This is what the tape shows. Again, like I said, this is not an interpretation. This is what the tape shows. So they've decided that this is the best way to play. And over the last three, four games, Adam, it's clearly come to fruition. And it's, and it's been very effective. Remember the start of the season, we were wondering because of Barkley's addition. Yep. We know historically the Eagles have not really been a running team. Other than obviously you got explosive plays, but we're talking about overall, they weren't really a running team, but you have to account for Barkley. Now we didn't know he'd be this good. Right. So it's really remarkable that the Eagles were the only team and still the only team going into last week and now still doing it. The only team that's run the ball more than they've passed it this season. It's just it's well, and Yeah. I mean, there's your answer now. Now, the, the key thing is, is Hertz is a part of that. That you get you can't lose Looks sight good. of that. Yeah. You know, Hertz is a significant part of the run game. And over the last four games, he's not turned the ball over, which is normally the way, you know, he's had moments where he's turned the ball over in his career, but for the most part, he's not a turnover prone quarterback. So, you know, you can't you can't overstate that. You know, if you can run the ball effectively, hit some big plays, convert third downs, and not turn it over. You're going to be a you know you're going to be a pretty good offense. You know we can sit here and debate whether that's going to beat you know teams that score thirty. You know we don't know the answer to that, but this is clearly the way the coaching staff sees as the best way for them to play offense. And I would add what this with with Hertz. This is the best I think he's looked running the ball since twenty two. I mean he looks. I would really agree. Good. He looks yeah. healthy and he looks good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hear from some people I know. Oh, he's not explosive. That's that's an irrelevant comment. The fact I guarantee that defensive coordinators, when they get set and, and do their work preparing for the Eagles, they are factoring in how to defend Jalen Hurts as a runner. There's no question about that. They're not sitting there going, "Oh, he's not Lamar Jackson or Jaden Daniels." The fact is, he's he runs he runs well, and he's an important part of the Eagles' offense. Yeah. And to underscore just how much they've been able to use him as a runner and then use their run game as an effective weapon, yeah. not just on first down. Greg, the Eagles had 17 third down attempts. But Jalen Hurts, I believe, had 11 third down back uh, drop backs. It's not very right. often that no. you see a third of your third downs without a drop back. I mean, most times, like if you mm -hmm. take the Rams, right, and Matthew, if he has 16 third downs, he's something of 15 for on the third. It may be yeah. good, it may be bad, but you don't and, see and, a third of them usually not being a drop back. And by the way, Hertz was seven for seven for 79 yards, and five of the seven completions resulted in first downs. So mm -hmm. like I said, you know, converting on third down is critical. And there's no way, there's no way that defenses are not accounting for Hertz running when it's third and seven. No way. Right. Right. Let's um let's just talk about a little bit about the wide receivers. Greg, we saw Jahan Dotson make a really nice play. And that's the type of play. Forget the bobbling part that was amazing. But we did see at Penn State his ability to high point a ball. We haven't seen it in the NFL, no. but that finally looked like a version or variation of the Penn State Jahan Dotson. And Johnny Wilson got called for OPI, but he did show up and had some blocks. Well, he had to play a lot because Brown did not play the second half. Right. What did you see just from those two guys? Anything that jumped out of you or anybody no, else? I mean, I'm being honest, no. I mean, <laughs> okay. they didn't throw it a lot. And, you know, yeah, I mean, Wilson was not really – you know, Wilson plays close to the formation. He's almost like a glorified tight end when he's in the game. Right, right. All right. Well, obviously, we know Saquon Barkley, Greg, was a, a big he's part of good. it. He's pretty yeah, good. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's, a, he's <laughs> decent. Yeah, he's decent. So um, I want to take a look at the first Barkley touch, the one he caught, the twenty-yard um, touchdown. Yes, and then we'll also take a look at the one that he ran into, which I thought was really about more about the play call. But here, as you guys, maybe and maybe some of the worst defense I've seen. Agreed. Wow. Uh, this is the wheel. This is the touchdown. Now, at first, Greg, I kind of thought this was like because um, I saw the motion involved. I'm like, and I was thinking, is this sort of a variation of the Green Bay touchdown just on the other side? But I think that there's, there are a lot of differences in this one. 
Well, I mean, obviously, you've got Barkley offset to the boundary. You're going to get dots in orbit motion to the field, resulting in the Jaguars' coverage adjustment. Um, they mat they ended up matching up man-to-man -to, -man to the boundary, okay? Well, a lot of teams do this. So if you let's see, run the motion, and then we'll freeze it. So okay. right about now, freeze it. So they're going to play four over three to the field, a zone concept, okay? Because now Dotson becomes to, uh, to the field. So they're mm -hmm. going to play four over three to the field, but they're going to match up man to man to the boundary, okay? Very common in the NFL. And and by the way, it's Savage, a safety who's matching up to Barkley. This is not a linebacker. Right. So, so now they're going to run um, – um, Actually, it's that's Calcaterra down below, so it's a yes. one by three. Yep. So it's Calcaterra, and he's going to run, I believe, a post or a. He gets. He, yeah, he takes. He breaks. He breaks inside. Mm hmm. So now again, it's almost like the Dearness Johnson Dean play. You're going to get one. The, one. Right. That's the play. That's yep. the that's the play. Right. And See, maybe that's what the uh, Jags were expecting on the, you know, when on the Nicobe that Nicobe would try to play this tighter and get burned, right? Stutter and go by Saquon. And this is Great you know, catch. Saquon gained <sighs> separation and Hertz drops it in the bucket on Great a throw. throw. I Great mean, this catch. is this is this is a play call that when I see plays like this, the first thing I think of um is they anticipated this, you know, from a coverage standpoint. They anticipated mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was Savage or a linebacker, they anticipated that it would be man to the boundary and they'd get Barkley one-on-one. -on -one. They anticipated it. Yeah. This is, by the way, really impressive because Barkley is a wide receiver in this case. And to have the kind of separation as a wide receiver, I think, is a little bit different, even if you're a fast running right. back. I mean, That's you know, we saw ball. Brian Westbrook be really good at shiftiness as a receiver. But this is... This is Darnell Savage. He's a pretty good player. Yeah, he played nickel earlier in the, in the season. No question. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I, Savage is, uh, you know, he, he puts a jam on him and he's trying to run with him and then he just he just can't. Well, he looks back the for the, the ball. Round. He looks back for the ball and kind of yep. loses his speed yep. a little bit. Yeah. And, um, it's a great ball. I mean, it's a great ball. You know, yep. what can you say? Put, great he catch. In, he drops it in the bucket. It's amazing, you know. Jalen's really money on those outside the number, and it doesn't even have to be a wide yeah. receiver. But no, that's a really, really good, good play ball. there. Really well is like I said, it had the look of a play where they knew what they were going to get. And, and I like they, Jeff that he hung in there. He didn't move. No, he he saw it and delivered exactly where it needed to go. See, and that's what you want to do with every quarterback, by the way, not just Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Is if you can define it pre-snap. Okay. Now, obviously, you take the snap. You have to do a quick validation. Sometimes things do change, but nothing changed there. So, right. if you can define it, then the quarterback feels really confident in delivering the ball. All right. Bad defense. Oh. Good play call. Oh I mean, my I, God! Is this you horrendous? You could probably defense. go both ways with this. I yeah. kind of appreciated. How could you not? Great. I mean, he wasn't touched. Yeah. So let, let's set the stage here. This is third and seventeen. You can't give <laughs> up. A 19-yard touchdown on third and 17. So, I mean, clearly the Jaguars are in their, like, pass defense. They've got two deep safeties. Yeah. they got five across. And and I think what's notable is their defensive tackles here are both in, what, like a three-tech? I mean, they're, leave, they're, it's, they're it, in it, pass rush mode. It's a pass rush front. It's a pass rush front. you got right. two wide nines and two three techniques slash four right. eyes. It's a pass right. rush front. So, you, so I'm guessing that the Eagles were thinking this, Greg and Adam – that if we can spread, this is a good run here that we can get. And I bet if we can get 11 or 12, then we can go for it on fourth down because we love to go for it. They're, on fourth they're down, either right? thinking that or they're thinking field goal, Jeff. They're not thinking 19 yard touchdown. Absolutely not. So <laughs> I know you noted that um, that Dickerson and Cam Jurgens play well. And so at, at the snap, you can see Dickerson get a nice block and then Jurgens gets out there pretty quickly. And see, I'll tell you, it's, it's absolutely. Who is the um the slot corner to the top? This guy right here? No, to the top. Oh, uh, this guy. That is a good question. Mm -hmm. That guy is playing with about as much awareness as the three of us would play with in this. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Twenty-two. I don't know who. Oh, that's that is. the rookie who's actually had a nice year, Jerry and Jones from Florida State, who's mm -hmm. been a good player, but zero awareness right here. Yeah, you can see most guys are starting to move forward while he's still moving backwards. Yes. Yeah. Where are you going, dude? You yeah. Get, what a gift. Now, this is 
the part where when you have Saquon Barkley, you're just going to be better than others. Because I think a couple of running backs may get caught here, at Possibly. least by the inside the five. But Saquon just bendy. T- 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 Yep. But but I like the play call too, Greg, because um, I, I think that Kellen Moore d- understood that he could probably pick up some yards here. Well, I think he knew how they were going to rush the quarterback from their pass rush front, so he knew that he was going to get past the first level without a problem. Oh, uh, that he the, knew. This is yeah, the this is the Red Sea right here, my yeah, friend. Yeah, that he knew he'd get past the first level. After right. that, you don't know exactly, but you know that he can generate some velocity and speed getting through the first level. Yeah, you Jeff, you could get to the five right uh, there. I, I actually <laughs> might have been able to at least get to the fifteen. I'll give hey, you that. After you went to stretch, though, my man, I think you're looser. I think hey, you hey, can actually break so you know, to the outside. Uh-huh. Just so you know, when I was in college playing baseball, we had to run, get timed in the 40. I ran a 4.8, so maybe I could have gotten to the 5. Now, was that with a sundial? Well, I, I didn't say that that was for 20 yards. No, no. But uh, <laughs> I, I ran a 4.8. So you, yeah. you broke a 50. You broke a 5 Oh, Wow, yeah. really? Good job. Yeah, were, was someone pushing you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last one, and I do not bring this up to pick on Jalen, but a lot of people were wondering about the fourth down play call, right? Uh, this is the first fourth yeah. down that they go for it, that they don't get it. Now, Greg, I, I kind of want to add some context from what I learned from Jason Vaughn, but have you kind of set up exactly where the play was supposed to go? And unfortunately, I didn't make a great clip, so you might not see the upper receiver on the top, but um, you want to diagnose just the, the idea here? If, if memory serves me correctly, Jeff, this is the one where, uh, yes, I believe Smith in the flat, and then is Brown going to run the crosser? Yeah, so Smith right here at the bottom of the screen runs in motion, and... Oh, wait, this I is a different play. It. This is and, the fourth down. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have the wrong play. That's, you do have that's the wrong That's the third play. down. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the third down. No, let's... I don't... Yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah. And I guess I am going to pick a little bit uh, on J- Jalen on this, because this is third down... And Craig Calcaterra is in line here. Yeah. The motion is going to take a defender away. And it looks to me like Jalen has the opportunity to get Calcaterra right here, like right here, right? Look how long he waits. And then by the time he gets the ball to him, he gets two yards. That would have been a fright. They wouldn't have had to go for that first down, fourth down, I'm sorry, uh, on the next play if he hits Calcaterra. Well, this was just a case. This was just a case where. You know, the term I always use is elimination and isolation. He uh-huh. took too long to eliminate what wasn't there. Yep. That was yep. clearly not there. And right. then he should have got the ball to Calcaterra earlier. You so know, who do you think the first read is the first read to try to get it to, to Devante? Um, well, it's either going to be Devante or um, who's the other receiver there? That Devante. Well, this is um, Dotson. This is Dotson. Dotson. And I think that's Wilson at the top of the screen. Yeah. So, yeah. so. So, you know, they're obviously running this. Um, they, they switch up. They end up playing zone. They end up mm-hmm. playing cover two. Right. So, so cover two is kind of dead right now for Smith because the, the uh, middle hole defender has tremendous depth right off the bat. So mm-hmm. the seam ball is done. So and, and he really doesn't have a throw here. I mean, Jalen doesn't right. really see Calcaterra, though, I don't think. Until late, until late, yeah, obviously. It's possible. Yeah. I mean, he he also has Barkley with better vision. Now, here. the other factor, too, is here's where I don't know, Jeff. I don't know how this is taught, okay? Correct. But technically, because of of um, the middle hole defender here, mm-hmm. and I don't know if whether Smith is making a conversion based on the middle hole defender, but, you, you know... I've seen quarterbacks with timing and anticipation. If, if you're on the same page with your receiver, mm-hmm. like release it here, go forward, stop right there. Yep. Even a, even a few frames earlier, like right there, yeah, like right here, release the ball right now. Mm-hmm. Right, kick him basically on a on a stop route right there because you know he can stop right there in front of the defender. I've seen that you know a hundred times. Maybe that's not the you know again. I don't want to sit here and say that's what should have happened because mm-hmm. I don't know how they teach that. True. I mean, these are obviously players who are running routes for a reason, though. So, right. I mean, whether right. it's, you know, like I don't know if that was supposed <laughs> to be a seam route that Smith converted to this because of where the middle hole defender was, or right. I don't know if this was the route called. I don't know that. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see if I give the backside angle to that. 
And so Jason Avant had said um, that he was hanging out with Fletcher Cox at the game. LaShawn McCoy was back. And Fletcher was saying that he always struggled to see Jalen Hurts in the pocket because he's not a very tall quarterback. Right. So it was always hard to find him. And I wonder if that works against Jalen on sometimes plays like this where the receiver's a little closer because you have these massive yeah, guys. He's, in he's of clean you. here. He can see everything here. Even mm-hmm. even even a guy like Barkley leaking out, I I don't know. I'm asking you. He can see yeah. everything here. Okay. They're, they're, yeah, he can see everything. Okay, so I was he, trying to. He doesn't. We're, we're, I just was not sure where he was going early and and on this on this play. He's looking down the middle of the Smith. Yeah, so he's again, looking at Devontae. Yeah. but who's covered? Who's who? Who's who's covered? And, and, and then and yeah. then this is a nitpick. But if Bill Walsh was sitting here, he'd say mm-hmm. that this is something that needs to be coached. There's no reason for him to take that little slide to his left. Right. You want him to climb here. I mean, he, he might end up run. sliding and creating run. pressure. You're yeah, right. Imagine if he, he steps he, up a little. He breaks yeah. himself down. But yeah. Jeff, you're right. He actually could have run inside. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and then, again, I don't so, know. You know, again, I you know, these are things where I, I don't know, and I'm not going to sit here and act like you know he made a mistake. I don't know that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and then the f- next play, of course, was the fourth down um, where you can just, if you, if you remember it, it looked like the play was to Devontae on the right side on an out. He didn't pull the trigger on right. it. AJ is coming design. across the middle. That was too. the design of the play, and the ball should have been thrown. Yeah. 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 All right. Good stuff, oh. Greg. It is always fun to break down the tape with you. That was a good one. This was enjoyable. Was good yeah, one. I love yeah. it. This was fun. And I have a feeling the next one, we'll have a little bit modified schedule next week inside the tape. Obviously, we've been out a little earlier with the Eagles playing Sunday night and then having the Thursday turnaround. So it won't be long before you see us all again. And of course, we've got Inside the Birds pregame show coming up on Sunday before the big game against Dallas with Adam, Greg, and myself. So that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll catch you on the next one.